Okay, I'm going to uh, uh, do a short video on a kind of a hodgepodge of some ideas, uh, particularly relevant to those of you trading with Ninja Trader 8. And, uh, and some of this may work on 7 as well, but uh, I think Ninja Trader 7 is long gone for most of us. And what I want to show you is up here, the uh, this is called a market analyzer. Now, uh, what I've done is uh, I, I've put all this on one monitor. I've got six monitors, so this is usually on another monitor. And these this chart and the two thumbnail charts are bigger. Um, but I just wanted to be able to show you something on here. And I needed to get them all on one monitor because of my video recording it only does the one screen. So the thing I want to show you is that um, in an attempt to reduce the number of charts and the workload on the computer resources, uh, rather than having a lot of charts uh, on tabs across here, I just have the one. And you'll notice that over here I have this instrument link. I selected the color red. And then on any other charts that you, that well, here's an example here. This thumbnail's red, this thumbnail's red. And any other charts that are on my other screens, if they're set to red and my market analyzer is uh, instrument link is set to red, then any time I select one of these instruments, it's going to change all of my tra tra charts at one time. So, for example, I'm on the ES right now. And let's say we go to the NQ, the NASDAQ. So if I click on that, you can see it's loading right here. And it doesn't take that long to switch over. Um, it's going to maybe take a little longer now because of the resources being uh, used for this recording. Uh, but in a normal situation, it's almost instantaneous, at least with my computer. And I'm sure that would vary with the power of your computer. So that is a great way to, to make these changes. And this is, um, so we switch to the NQ. And um, what else do we want to show? The other thing that I think is, and this is now uh, switching to, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take just a second and, and get rid of this market analyzer. I don't think there's anything else I'd need to show. Now these columns, what I've done is I've created it so, um, I have I have a one minute and fifteen and a thirty minute represented here. See the one in parenthesis, the fifteen and the thirty. Uh, that's the time of the of the uh, charts that these are referencing. So uh, if I want to look at the thirteen EMA, forty eight EMA, and the two hundred SMA on the one minute chart, I can see whether they're bullish or bearish. S same thing for the fifteen minute chart, and same thing for the thirty minute chart. And then over here, I ha and this mini chart's not showing because it's a weekend and I'm not getting any stream data. Uh, this shows the net change for the uh, on a rolling minute by minute basis during the active trading day and the maximum up, maximum down. And then this would show me my realized profit. That is to say, the position's closed and it'll book the profit or loss. And this is showing any unrealized profit while that uh, position would be open. It'll show over here. And uh, so I think that's the long and the short of it. Of course, you can put different columns on your market analyzer, but these are ones that that I like to do. I'll also, uh, since we have a major uh, expiry date change on Monday, tomorrow, and this recording is on March 12th, 2023, uh, I'll also put volume for, for the older um, expiration date and the, and the upcoming. And then I like to switch when I see the newer updated expiry, expiry date uh, begin to have greater volume. Um, let's see. So let's, uh, I'm going to move this out of the way and up out of the way. And then I'm going to bring this up to the top like so. And I'll bring this up here where I, this is where I normally have it, these little thumbnails. I, basically sp split the difference like that. Okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you has to do with uh, entering a trade and maybe managing your risks. Uh, what I like to see is I like to see a confluence of my fast and slow MACDs down here. And uh, so you can see that the fast MACDs is red. And then finally, the 
slower MACD is, is read there, so that would suggest a, a place to enter. And, uh, you know, I'm going to switch here to back to the ES. And there's a reason for that, and that's because I have, all, I have my zones already uh, uh, showing on this chart, and, and I want to use those in this demonstration. Uh, you can see that um, here we had price, uh, what time was this? This was 11.15 on Friday morning, and price came up to this zone up here based on the pre-session pre high. Uh, that's, that's from which I drew this and created this zone here, bounced straight off it almost to the tick, and then rolled over. And now we can begin to see the MACDs having confluence in their color. The MACD crossed below its signal line, and the slower MACD turned red. And if we look to the left, you can see that this main chart is a three-minute chart, and the chart over here is a six, and this is a 12. So you can see that on the three-minute chart right there, if I hover my pointer right there on the big chart and look to your left, you can see that uh, the three-minute chart is, is coming right through the zero line, and the 12-minute, not quite, not quite. So this this actually would be a, a more risky trade, even though I have the alignment of my fast and slow MACD, because it's heading right into some major zones that I've created, one of which is the uh, my favored. You can see it's in this magenta cover color. That's uh, the Asian uh, zone that I create. And that, that influence lasts throughout the whole day. Um, I found and um, and then up here I've got a, a zone here this is based on yesterday's low or I should say the prior day's low right here so there was a lot of uh, and the other thing was yesterday's close right here you can see why close yesterday's close so getting in there uh, would have been a, uh, a a little bit of a risk uh, we did have what looks like a bearish um, flags let me copy that and something like that. You can see how this uh, bear flag had broke to the downside. And then we had the confirmation with our MACD. So that would have been a greater uh, risk. But let me show you what I do to try to mitigate some of my risk. You notice this 13 EMA right here. And, and that's the only EMA I have on this particular chart. And what I'll do is I'll consider getting out of a trade if price comes up and i i'd like to see it well, i don't want to i don't like to see it but if it closes above the upper envelope line on this 13 ema uh then uh, that's uh you know that for me is an ex exit or if the faster macd crosses above its signal line right there to me that's an exit so i would have been in this case getting out right in here we had some consolidation here it's sitting right on top of this zone that was you know dr uh, drawn before this even showed up and so we had this con uh, consolidation area i had this cross above its signal line on the fast macd had not yet crossed above that upper envelope line on the 13 EMA. So I took the better exit and getting out somewhere around in here. You can always enter, uh, re enter. As you can see here, uh, we have uh, what I especially love, and that's where the, the slower MACD line was red and it just turned a little bit green right there, but substantially it's, it's on its course on the way down. Whereas the fast MACD had a pullback, right? And it's a wonderful opportunity to jump back in. Uh, to that trade where you have the confluence of the red color on both the fast and the slow MACD right here. And you look to the left, you can see that uh, both those uh, three and, uh, I'm sorry, the six and the 12 minute thumbnail charts are below their zero lines. And for the most part, their MACDs are also red. So that's a, a strong place to get in. You do have the thread of this other zone right here. However, if I use my exit strategy and say, okay, I'm going to hold my breath and hope price gets through it without um, coming up above this upper envelope, moving average envelope line there, and or have my, my uh, fast MACD cross above its signal line. So I would have stayed in that all the way down, right through this um, threatening uh, support uh, zone, 
all the way down. And what would have gotten me out? Would it have been the the uh, move above the upper envelope? No, because it, I had this cross right here, right here, the fast uh, MACD crossing above its signal line right there. So I would have been out right in this realm, and I was I would have for been fortunate in catching the absolute low of this uh, significant move on Friday. So that's, um, I think that's what I wanted to cover. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stretch this out to a long video, but uh, a couple of things that I think are, are well worth taking a look at. Other, other levels that are crucial. If I, uh, if I put on my uh, 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 VWAP, my uh, volume weighted average, um, well, I can't even remember what the P stands for. I use VWAP so much. Price, I guess value weighted, that's right. Volume weighted average price. These are past, uh, and I use weekly, not the daily. And these are past closing prices of the VWAP weekly uh, standard deviation levels. Uh, here's one here. Here's one up here. And I think that's the only one I see right here. Um, but they have influence on price, uh, so that that's another level to maybe look at as well. And then if you use volume profile, uh, those yellow lines are areas of low volume, low volume nodes. But cleaning that ch uh, chart up, trying to keep most of the junk off there, uh, I rely mostly on my MACDs and uh, and levels levels i like to think of the the zones these zones as something that i lean against in order to enter a trade see i leaned against this resistance zone up here and would enter on the break of this bearish uh, flag supported by my macd's so it's a pretty simple rule set and the only thing i need to do is don't over trade and uh, and don't get greedy